So then we got the who owes you money. So you would think this report would tie in mainly, these reports would tie mainly into the balance sheet account of accounts receivable. Who owes you money? Accounts receivable. That's what the accounts receivable is. Gives us more detail on that. So if I go back on over, we're gonna say, all right, then we've got the accounts receivable aging detail. So now we've got this aging report. And this gives us more detail uh, on who owes us the money it get in a detailed fashion, but it also breaks out how old or outstanding the items are. The total here, if I change the date range to December, should match what's on, on the balance sheet for AR. So it's giving us more detail about a line item on the balance sheet, like most of the reports do. This is the accounts receivable aging summary. So similar layout of a report that you might be familiar with if you've worked with accounts receivable at all, where you've got the breakout of how old they are in summary and the customers and the total once again should tie out to what's on the balance sheet. Closing that out, we've got the collections report. So it gives us information on, on the collect. So again, similar to close to the AR, we got the customer uh, balance detail report. So this is gonna be similar to these agings, but they're not gonna give us the breakout of the agent, just give us the information by customer. These two right here, and then the summary is similar. These two right here are useful to know that the balance sheet account of accounts receivable breaks out by customer. That's what you want. But oftentimes in practice, if I go to the first tab, you'll find that information practically in the sales area and the customers and the, the balances for open invoices are, are basically backing up and supporting your accounts receivable. So we'll talk more about that in the future, but they're just giving more detail on the major balance sheet account of accounts receivable. You got your uh, invoice list. Now invoices are the items that increase accounts receivable. So if you're talking about open invoices, generally the open invoices that have not been paid, we haven't collected on them, are going to be the balance in accounts receivable, given more detail about the accounts receivable. Invoices and uh, receive payment. Again, this is a variant on accounts receivable because the invoices are the things that, that increase accounts receivable. Open invoices, a report that's given us detail once again on accounts receivable in essence, because invoices are what create the accounts receivable. Uh, you got the statement list showing the statements that have been sent out. So your s statements, uh, again, giving you information about stuff you're doing within basically the customer cycle. And then you've got your terms list, which is the terms like net 30 and net 10 and so on. So this is just a list of those terms, not terribly useful most of the time because you'd basically be changing those lists up here in the, in the information up top or as you do the data input. Unbilled charges. So charges, so unbilled charges are charges that you have uh, taken place, possibly that you've entered a bill or expense. And then when you, when you are then gonna create an invoice, you're gonna pull that into the invoice. So this is given a list of those items that you have not yet billed, meaning you haven't created an invoice to the customer, but they're waiting. So next time you go into, so for example, if I went to uh, Amy's, Amy's Bird, if I go, invoice and say Amy's bird some sanctuary then I've got this item to pull over into it because it's waiting there because I already entered it so we'll talk about billable billable items and entering time later but that's what that report is doing and do you want to leave yes so that is that one closing that out unbilled time is a similar thing we have time entered that we haven't created an invoice for we haven't billed the customer